Uh, looks like Morgana, Yasuo, and Thresh have been banned out by Blue Team. Pretty standard bans right now. Thresh is a little bit shocking. I would expect to see maybe like a Cassidin ban, uh, a Vi ban if you're worried about junglers, uh, even like a Maokai because Maokai top is pretty strong right now. Uh, but nothing really wrong with what they have banned out. Then on the other side, they banned out Jax, Braum, and Leona. I've said many times that I don't think Braum is that big of a threat in solo queue. Uh, he's definitely terrifying in an organized team or in higher elo. But just in terms of low elo kill potential, there's better picks in my eyes. I was calling Cass Tash. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Cass in higher elo. He does snowball heavily. I don't think he's that strong, but I have seen him be banned more often, and I've seen him played more often recently, and I can understand why they would do that. Uh, regardless, let's go over the, the actual team comps. So, mid lane has picked up Lux, then they have a Rengar top, Hecarim jungle, and then bot lane is going to be Sona Jinx. Sona Jinx has some crazy damage potential. If they get any sort of an early advantage, I would expect them to keep it. Uh, whereas, they're going to be facing into a Nami Caitlyn bot lane, uh, where Nami Caitlyn has a better poke and hard engage potential, where like you land a bubble once they're to half health or so, and then boom, they're dead. Done. Whereas Sona Jinx are more going to be about quick burst trades, where Sona's going to land a quick combo, Jinx is going to land a quick combo, and then they're going to want to retreat and back out. Um, overall, I would actually give that slight, the, the lane itself, I would give that over to Blue Team, because Nami Caitlyn, I think, has a better 1 through 4 than Sona Jinx. That being said, Sona Jinx is better in the mid to late game because you have the, the Jinx resets and you have the flash alts coming in from Sona to set up those early plays. Whereas Nami, a little bit more tricky to use your combo, but either one has a, a, a good chance of succeeding there. Uh, then they're going to be dealing with a Zyra mid and Aurelia top and a Lee Sin jungle. Lee Sin, even though he was nerfed, doesn't matter. He's still super, super strong. He will always be strong uh, until they change his kit drastically. Uh, that being said, he is more reliant on landing early plays. So on blue side, I'd be trying for some early protection, early wards, to try and just keep some some level of safety. Because in order for Lee Sin to succeed, he has to land early ganks. He has to land early counter jungle. He has to get ahead, or he's going to fall off much harder than he did before the nerfs. Rengar Aurelia, that's a skill matchup, I would say. Same with Lux Zyra. It's actually annoying for both of them. I would say that would go, go slightly over to Zyra during laning phase, uh, and then after laning phase it really boils down to how each team is playing, how far ahead or behind they are, and how well they're landing their combos. No, no one of those picks is necessarily better than the other. Um, Zyra offers a little bit more DPS, whereas Lux is more siege and burst and poke, and um, yeah, it, it really just depends on how they decide to set things up. If you guys have any questions in chat, hit me up. I will try and answer those before the game itself is uh, in progress. There's going to be a little bit of a black screen while we get into things here though, but we will be able to, to take care of this in the long term. A Victor staff? I would like a Victor. Yeah, a Victor emote would be awesome. I would actually like a, like, 8-bit or 16-bit version of the the emoticon that we have right now, or sorry, the, the icon that we have right now, turned into an emoticon. I think that'd be really cool. The current Morgana nerfs. I haven't seen them that much. Uh, last ones I saw, it was slight damage reduction to the, the Black Shield, so that was easier to pop. I like the idea of Black Shield being easier to pop, but I think it needs to be a lower uh, lower duration, and I don't know if they've made that change. I haven't seen the most recent PvE nerfs, so I, I can't really comment on that too much. Yeah, I, me and Brian will both do some like weird little gimmicks for the next few subscribers. If you have something you want us to do, whether it's like, oh my god, do push-ups on stream, or whether it's, oh my god, sing something, or, or do something, we want to help you guys out and, and show our appreciation, so just, like, ask, and we'll try and do something for you. As long as it's compliant with the terms and services of Twitch. Alright, so we are still just loading in here. I'm not seeing a whole lot of questions popping up in chat. Uh, just a quick extra comment. Um... Blue side, 
they cannot afford to fall too far behind. Because Rengar is a beast when he's ahead, when he gets picks for himself, but he doesn't necessarily come back into games outside of massively outplaying his opponents. So if he falls behind versus Aurelia, Aurelia should be able to deal with him in the mid to late game. If Hecarim falls behind, eh, he still has his alt, but he he's pretty reliant on those early ganks. Um, same, same thing with uh, Lux and Sona and Jinx. They're very powerful picks when ahead, but when they're behind, they're a little lackluster. Alright, so we got everything lined up. In overall team fights, I'm going to give it over to... Um, I would actually say blue side. Because they have the Sona alt initiation, they have the Hecarim alt initiation, either of those works. The third option being uh, Lux leads with a binding, lands a binding, and is able to combo in on top of it. So they have three different ways to easily make a start to a fight. And then they have three or four ways to disengage fights. They have the, the Rengar Bolas, which are not overly strong at disengage, but it's something. They have the Lux Bindings, the Lux Lows, Lux Shields, all very good at disengaging. They have, Sorry, Brian was starting a video in the background. They have the Sona Alt for disengage, which it can be used for. They do have the, the Jinx Zap and the Jinx Traps to disengage. So they have opportunities to engage, they have opportunities to disengage, and they have rather good team fight potential, just in terms of their, their DPS, their, their pick potential, that sort of thing. And then on the split side, though, okay, how are they engaging? Okay, well, Lee Sin can land, like, an insect. He, he can jump in behind someone and kick them out. That's one way to engage. But what else, right? A Nami bubble, well, they have to be pretty damn close to that. Nami excels at disengage and teamfight control, not engaging. Uh, same thing with Zyra. Zyra is amazing at countering engages, but not necessarily good at engaging for her team. Same thing with Aurelia. Aurelia can jump into the back line, but unless that distraction is long enough for, for Nami to land like a, a three-person or, or more bubble or a five-man alt or something, they're probably not going to have opportunities to engage. So I, I'm simply saying that blue side is a little bit more consistent in their team fights, not necessarily that they're better in those team fights. I would like to have a quick comment over to Lux. Um, wait, is she AFK? No, they're they're invading. Okay. So I actually like that invade. Uh, it is warded though, so they're gonna know. So I'm gonna expect Lee Sin to just run around and take away the enemy red. There's no reason for them to do anything else. But the comment I wanted to make is that Lux is running ignite. That's not something I'd recommend doing. I would either go heal or barrier, depending on what, what opponent you're versus. Uh, Clairvoyance being a very, very niche option. I sometimes do it for fun. I would not highly recommend it, though. It's a, I'm duoed with my jungler and I want my jungler to make your life hell sort of a pick. When you're versus a jungler, who's not going to make your, your life too, too, much, too much of a problem. I could have sworn that they had a, a purple ward in here. Maybe I was blind, though. Alright, so I want to keep a quick eye on bot lane. Purple side does get the level 2 first, but not able to land and engage off of it. Alright, Jinx is a little bit behind in experience. So I'm not sure what she was doing during that time that she's fallen behind. Alright, Lee Sin not able to land his gank top. Alright, so Sun is trying to go in with some poke, but as you can see, Nami with the, the triple bounces is able to cancel that poke very effectively. And that's what I was saying, that Nami has the better early laning phase, assuming both teams are positioning equally or playing equally. Now again, Lee Sin trying for these early ganks, but not really landing much from it. The flash is blown mid, but they don't get too much more. So unless Zyra is able to really push that advantage, which it's hard for her to do because she, she is a little bit plant reliant there. And she's going to have some problems. Up in top lane. Rengar not able to land that early cheese, it looks like. Pretty much dead even in top lane, actually. Uh, exception being, of course, that Aurelia has more CS. Now, here comes the cheese. If you're going to go for the cheese, I would expect you to be running Ignite. That being said, you played it well, you, you baited them in, and you were able to get the kill. But generally, if you're playing Rengar and you're going to go for that early, just jump and start snowballing sort of cheesiness, you're going to want to run Ignite. In this case, though, it works out for you, so good, good work. 
Alright, we see Lee Sin trying for another gank. The double flash bubble, very, very nice. That being said though, you've gone way too deep and you're gonna get knocked out by those. I'm not sure why you kept chasing. The double bubble was very, very nice. But unless your team is able to capitalize it and secure a kill during the bubble duration, continuing to dive isn't going to do anything for you, right? There was no kill potential there. That was unwise. Alright, back in top lane. Looks like Rengar has not gone back to buy, but oh my god, he almost takes down Aurelia again. That just shows what Stabby Tabby can do. I mean, it... We've seen the effectiveness of Rengar. No one can really argue that Rengar isn't a strong pick when played well, and he's doing a good job. Alright, so he has used his teleport, but he hasn't bought anything, so I didn't necessarily see where he used that then. That's, that's a little confusing to me. Did he, like, teleport in after the red? I, I'm not sure what happened there. Okay. Alright, so we see Hecarim back mid this time, picking up a little bit of ex extra experience, but not really able to land much more. Um, I wanted to point out that Lee Sin has been trying constantly to gank. He's tried to gank on every single lane, I did see him get the, the Lux Flash mid, so that, that's lovely. But he needs to have more of an effect on this early game if he wants to do very much. Because he's going to start to scale uh, a little bit poorly as the game goes on. If you're not able to land those early ganks, and you're not, you're not going to get this kill here, you need to be rushing level 6 so that you can make a play at 6 and get yourself back into the game in, in terms of map control. You, I would have said, after you got the Lux Flash mid, said, okay, I had an influence on my lanes, now I'm going to farm to 6. That's probably what I would have suggested. Alright, back in bot lane, CS slightly in Jinx's favor, which is a little bit shocking. Caitlyn should be getting pretty much every CS. Um... Yeah, that's just a little bit surprising. That would just be an indication that she might want to work on her positioning a little bit more. Because I do see her taken a little bit low, and I 